One, two, the cut down. The Sigma FPL, the evolutionary follow up to the Sigma FP, the smallest full frame video camera or camera to be released. And wow, is this a confusing one? Lord, is this a confusing one? I don't know what Sigma were thinking. And Sigma is a company I'm a big fan of. Sigma make amazing, amazing third-party lenses. They make amazing third-party lenses. And they make lenses for, you know, Sony. They've got the L-Mount Alliance that they make the lenses for. Sigma do well when it comes to third-party lenses, not just in terms of the value, but the quality of their lenses. When it comes to building camera bodies, I do not know what they're doing. I don't know what their end game is. I don't know whether they're just doing it for fun. To, I really don't know. I really don't know. But we are going to look at the Sigma FPL. And that L... <laughs> I think that's something that can really be resonated with this. Boy, let's switch over. Cine D. They did a video coverage on this man, but you know, <sighs> Sigma FP announced 61 megapixel hybrid autofocus based camera. <sighs> so there's a detachable EVF that can be attached to it on the side as well, right? The camera just looks like an ergonomic nightmare because it's it has no depth to it. There's no depth to it, and it's just a pure box with no grip. A really, a very unique film, but just, you know. Camera features a 61 megapixel, full frame, bare sensor, crop zoom function, hybrid autofocus system, USB-C power delivery, and some useful functions such as true 24 frames a second. Um, a form factor with an L mount, okay, as I stated before. Um, newly announced optical viewfinder, EVF 11 features 0 0.5 resolution OLED display at 90 degree tilt, USB output, as well as a 3.5 millimeter headphone port, which is obviously what you need to get the headphone out, which is the EVF. Um, okay. Sigma surprised the industry, industry by introducing a very full frame compact camera that was capable of recording 12 bit Cinema DNG 4K video to an external USB C SSD. All right. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. New FP. FPL. The new Sigma FPL features a 61 megapixel sensor, the highest resolution ever for Sigma digital cameras. The crop zoom function has a five times crop factor while maintaining full HD quality. Hybrid autofocus combines contrast detection and phase detection. It ensures optimal precision and quick response. Power delivered via USB-C connection provides virtually unlimited hours of usage. Two new color modes, powder blue, and Duotone, a new way of sharing photo and video settings. Camera settings can be shared easily with QR codes. Exposure, shutter speed, aperture, and white balance settings can all be shared instantly. And introducing the highly anticipated electronic viewfinder, exclusive for Sigma FP cameras. Carry all these amazing things in your pocket. FPL. Sigma.
A compact size is very important to Sigma, although Sony came very close with the A7C, I think the A7C makes a better justification of actually being the smallest full frame camera that you can actually buy. 61 megapixels. <laughs> Why? Crop zoom function, as stated, maximum of a 5x, no digital enhancement, pixel to pixel, one to one, and still have 4K and HD. Hybrid autofocus. Um, okay good first generation unlimited power when it comes to it internally you can shoot true for 24 frames a second which is something like you know I, i've got on my fuji xt4 and xt3 i don't understand where they pulled the strings on this one on the surface it looks good on the surface it looks good right i'm gonna i'm gonna come back and i'm gonna give my fire shots on this because uh, i watch i watch i watch certain reviews on it i watch certain reviews on it and the camera just doesn't make sense. Why is there a 61 megapixel camera? Why is there a 61 megapixel sensor in there in the first place? It's not a photo camera, right? There's most likely a chance that from what I've what, what I've seen, it's probably the same sensor as the A7R4, 61 megapixels. And for that price that you're gonna be paying for it, you might as well get the A7R4 and you're gonna get much more sensible when it comes to the video. Now, I know that it does shoot externally, ProRes RAW as well as Blackmagic RAW, right? But there's weird quirks of it in terms of the image quality and the degradation. It doesn't need those that much many megapixels. It has that many megapixels, but yet can it shoot 8K? Can it shoot 6K? No, you're pretty much putting it out there to be doing crops. Nobody's gonna be needing to do crops, right? On top of that, there's still no internal 10-bit codex. It's still 8-bit or raw, nothing in between. And you're pretty much having to pay close to 3,000 pounds, including the EVF, which when you put the EVF on, apparently it blocks the HDMI out. What's the point? I get the whole compact nature that they're trying to go with this year, but apparently also the, the face detection autofocus just does not work. The contrast-based, the hybrid system just does not work. I do appreciate that they've made an attempt right? But as much as I wasn't an FP user and I didn't really focus on an FP that much because it just seemed way too quick, quirky and way too weird. Whatever they've done with this one, it ain't it fam. It really ain't it. It really ain't it, especially not for that price when you're getting very close to cameras like the FX3, very close to the cameras that, you know, like the Sony a7 and 3 easily being undercut by cameras like the Blackmagic 6K Pro pocket cinema camera 6k pro which makes a lot more sense in terms of usability with things like built-in nd this whole pursuit of the smallest full frame when it's compromising so much for ergonomics fit actual performance high megapixels for no reason where you can't even shoot 8k or 4k when it comes to anything even at 24 or 20 or 30 fps 50 or 60 please make it make sense I, I need it to make it make sense i do maybe 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 someone else understands what the sigma fpl really goes for and most of the time i can dissect and i can understand cameras and where their perspective is coming for but unless they've drastically reduced the price and even then you might as well just get the F, fp and just call it a day if you really want the smallest full frame camera for video which already has weird in-between codecs that are not non-existent where you kind of have to go from zero to a hundred. And even then the behavior is very weird. I don't really have much to say. Uh, I'll put myself in my shoes. Would I be excited to try out the Sigma FPL? Of course, because I always like to try things hands-on and see if it proves me wrong. Would I go out of my way to go buy it? No. No, no, I would have a better, you would have a better chance me buying a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K Pro for the fact that it shoots B-Raw internally and ProRes internally, just for those two reasons alone. And the fact that it has built-in NDs and it's a Super 5mm sensor, which I have nothing against full frame. I'm a big fan of Super 35, but this ain't it, Sigma. If you want to do this properly with camera bodies, do it properly, man. I know you want to come from a unique angle, but don't go so unique where the camera just basically is not usable. And then now you're adding more stuff that makes it even less usable. We love your lenses. Make us also like at least your camera bodies about doing weird evolutionary steps like this, man. Overall, you know what? That's my thoughts right now on the Sigma FPL.